notar de que su voz tiene que ser escuchada y, y yo creo que está teniendo su impacto en los tomadores de decisiones. Cada vez son más las reuniones que se, ve, se pueden dar a, a nivel parlamentario y bueno, confiamos en que tenga sus frutos. No creo que este año, que es un año electoral en nuestro país, eh, pero sí en el año que vi, finales del año que viene o en el próximo año que tengamos eh, resultados positivos o por lo menos eh, estamos... Hello uh, and welcome to uh, the last night, the last night of uh, Son of Liberty Radio taking over the scope screen, stream, stream. So uh, uh, we started out, Kevin and I did a show, uh, our Monday, which was not your Monday, but anyway, um, and we talked about harm reduction sort of gave broad definition, showed you examples of harm reduction. Uh, night two, um, we had a great discussion with Skip Murray and Richard Pruin um, talking about uh, neurodiversity and the benefits of nicotine to the people that, uh, th that have some neuro neurodiversity issues, myself included. Um, and then last night, we had sort of a, a bridging, crossing borders sort of thing Um, we had Jeffrey Zamora from Costa Rica and um, Ignacio Levia from uh, Chile. And we had a lively discussion and uh, talk about Michael Bloomberg and, and corruption with uh, WHO and uh, Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Um, so tonight I thought, you know, I think it would be a great idea to, uh, to, to bring in um, – Some, some friends of mine that are amazing advocates for vaping. Um, one of them will say he's not, a, he's not a vaping advocate. He doesn't really do the politics. But I tell you what, when he starts uh, talking about vaping and how important it is, um, there is no better voice. Um, and uh, he, he's Italian, Italian-American. So, so we're getting a little bit of the Italy connection. Um, and then we also have our Greek companion, um, who is truly bicontinental. Uh, he spends part of his time here, part of his time there, um, has some vape businesses there, but he is also one of the most well-known, most knowledgeable people that I know uh, when talking about politics and vaping. So, oh, and then Kevin will be here. Um, so uh, we're going to have some fun. So Kevin and Dimitri Agrifiotis. I always say his name wrong, or I always get twisted, uh, tongue tied. And then we're going to have Phil Bissardo. So uh, they're all going to come in here uh, when the magic happens. Hello, guys. Hello, And gentlemen. Look, look, Kevin. Dimitri say, is uh, wearing my shirt. I just want to say it's pretty amazing that uh, Kevin was late and Phil was not, which is a very, it's a, that's a rarity. <laughs> True, no, 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 no. So you have to understand that Kevin is always late. <clears throat> I'm and Phil is always late too. So, <laughs> so we're even. I said there's always one in every in every partnership. There's always one that's a late that's a later. Well, you know, I have a a fantastic secretary that keeps me in line and keeps all of my appointments straight. Uh, make sure that make sure that I'm on time all the day. Uh, and, and he he's he's a beautiful man, and he's Greek too, by the way. So yes. Your story. So, story. Um, Phil and Dimitri, uh, I don't know if you are uh, aware of what we've been doing for the past, uh, what, four days or so since Sunday night. Uh, we've been doing this whole 24-hour day streaming. I shouldn't say we. I spent one hour each day with these guys, but, uh, you know, poor, uh, poor Hennage and poor uh, lovely, lovely Nancy have been mm -hmm. backstage, I think, the entire time. Yeah, it's a valiant effort. Of course, uh, we promoted it Tuesday on the DP show. We talked a little bit about it. I just wish that more uh, influencers in our in our industry would be promoting it as well, too, because it is a tremendous effort what they're doing at, at a very um, uh, dangerous intersection for our industry, especially Now, right I now will with defend, the COP9 I, going on. So 
I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm discouraged when I don't see, um, when I, I mean, you know, this, this should be talked about by, by everybody. And I, I just don't see people getting involved as always, as like most of the <laughs> Well, time, I, so. I will defend Tiny Lips. I did reach out to him, um, at the beginning of the week. And sadly, I don't think he, I don't think he got, looks at my private messages so he missed out until like yesterday <laughs> you know i i do agree i agree that it is a tremendous effort and and had i um been been uh invited to do like uh, i i would have gone a full 24 hours i would have gone a full 24 hours with you uh all i would have needed uh is is uh, a coffee um a vape and a bottle of jack daniels and i would have Listen, for, don't uh, believe that please don't no, believe no, no, that I, I don't let me tell you something but... as soon as we get on an airplane within 90 seconds feels asleep and that within is 90 seconds like he don't even he don't even put a seat i have to put a seatbelt on he falls asleep don't and listen that, to is, that. That, that is because i don't have my bottle of jack daniels <laughs> but then there's snuggle time for you demi right <laughs> <laughs> who's the inside of the spoon is all i want to know that's right <laughs> so um you know I, I i i introduced you guys and you know i I said that Phil doesn't always like to call himself an advocate, and um, he he may not be the the encyclopedia of vape advocacy, but uh, when he gets fired up, he gets fired up. Yeah, I do, I do. I, I you know what? I get fired up because there's just so much nonsense going on uh, in the world right now. You, you, I've seen this industry. I've seen the birth of this industry. You know, I, I, I like you guys have been with it from day one from day one i mean i can remember going to to shows and having grown men come up to me crying saying thank you for getting me off of cigarettes when everything else failed me um vaping worked vaping worked it, it, it worked for those people uh it worked for me it worked for us on this show it worked for people watching and it's just it's so sad it is so sad that that we have to fight so hard to not die of cancer. It's it's just it's it's insane. It's absolute insanity. Look, we got to protect the kids. I understand that. Protect the kids. Do what you have to do to keep the products out of the hands of kids. But as a mature adult, don't take my product away, don't take my device away, don't take my flavor away. Let me choose what I want to not die of cancer. Yep. Bingo. Yeah. I mean, you've hit all of the nails, uh, all the nails on the head in the first try. Um, sadly, uh, you know, and we've, I think it's been talked about ad nauseum. Um, you know, we got guys like Michael Bloomberg uh, who give the FCTC, you know, somewhere around a million dollars a month or something like that. It seems it's billions of dollars in the last decade. Um to do exactly that, to tell people how to live their lives, to tell people what they can have and what they can't have. Um, and uh, last night, what's really fun, this is not funny, but it, it, it was, it was unexpected. Um, we're talking about Michael Bloomberg and his, and his you know, attempts to govern uh, with a checkbook across the globe. And uh, I said that it seemed inordinately disproportionate in in the low to middle income countries and uh h h says so, well he's doing it in other countries he's doing it in the developed countries too and ignacio um from uh, chile just goes off he's like it is not the same he is treating us uh brown people like we're monkeys in the trees and uh it was amazing mm -hmm. It was amazing. And yep. I don't disbelieve that. I mean, obviously, he tries to affect American stuff and European stuff, but he doesn't have nearly the uh, the impact. In well, he doesn't have to work that does. hard here. <laughs> no, it seems like FDA and states are doing a pretty much good job for him, so he really doesn't have to work as hard. But other countries that don't have the same system as America, because America has various systems to squash vaping. It's not just one. We pick any you know, three letter acronym will, will destroy vaping in America. And other countries don't have that. So other countries are more prone to be influential um, uh, by, by uh, moves like that, especially countries that depend a lot on, on tobacco tax or their country lives off uh, um, the sale of tobacco. So 
Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely more. I, I would say he's definitely more influential than he is in the, in the United States as far as the media is concerned. The narrative here has been written, but that's just because we just have mul a multitude of, of enemies here and he doesn't have to work that hard. Well, I mean, he is essentially bankrolling campaign for tobacco free kids. Sure, but not as he's not the only one. I no. mean, <laughs> no. Uh, smokers are as well too. You know, they're 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 funding the, the campaign for tobacco free kids as well too. So that is, that is true. Uh, is, portion of the, the USA money you know. does go to them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it, it. So the whole point of the scope thing, though this this whole thing that we've been doing since Sunday night, um, here, uh, is sort of a response to COP six or COP nine, COP nine, um, where we've been sort of, uh, locked out. You know, they're not letting. They're not letting us in. They're not letting any uh, harm reduction people in. It's all, you know, uh, countries that have a monopoly on tobacco in their countries. They're allowed to be there. They own the tobacco farms. They own the processing facilities. Um, they sell the tobacco, uh, but they're allowed to be in. But other people that produce tobacco products, according to their definition of tobacco product, are not allowed to be in. I'm curious, is, is this a surprise to anybody? I mean, haven't we been locked out since day one of everything? We got locked out of all the flavor bans. We got locked out of uh, of, of T21. We got locked out of everything. You know, we we tried all of the uh, the the um the legal routes, uh, the petitions, the 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 the, uh, the the groups of people together holding up signs. We've been locked being out nice. of everything. We were being nice. Yeah, we were being nice. I mean, what do what will they listen to? Do I have to say the word? Right. Uh, check because, I mean, like, I feel like that's that's all that's left at this point. It I, ain't the, the frustration is real, guys. It, it nothing has worked. We have not been listened to at all. They do not give a shit about us. No. We are a bunch of dirty smokers that they can't wait to die away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have to cure smoking. They just got to wait till all the smokers are dead. I, I just so. want to say that uh, COP9 would have been so much more fun if they invited Phil Busardo. I mean, at I least know, he right? could have brought some entertainment to that to that event, you know, <laughs> if nothing else. I you you, know? That's one of, one of the reasons why I, I, like, I can't get too involved in advocacy because I am going to sit at a meeting like COP9 and I'm going to tell everybody to go fuck themselves because they're out of their minds. There's nothing wrong with that. Somebody <laughs> has to. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Demi, I don't know. He's he's I don't know. I'm gonna think about my thing. He's moving up on your on your on your boy uh, crush uh, scale. His boy crush list is changing. His man crush thing. <laughs> so I guess Phil and I don't belong in, in hearings. Yeah, well, I mean I, the frustration is real and as somebody that's yeah. dealt with legislators for the last nine years, I feel I feel I know exactly how how I mean there's many times I've been in a politician's office there'd be congress or senate or, or whatever and and i i feel that that same way it takes a lot of mm -hmm. self-control uh not to uh not to say those words i mean it that, really that, does especially that's actually one of the very crazy. very impressive things about you is that you can keep a level head you can keep a cool head you can you can um you can pull information like that pull data like that see like i can't do that yeah. I, I can't pull information like you can. I can't pull data like you can. Uh, you are definitely the, the businessman in the relationship. Um, me, I'm just frustrated. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. But but I think that um, if if you know, aside from their little you know cluster party that's going on there, I think that uh, again, you know, I had this conversation in France with Phil. We were just there visiting VDLV. And if you guys have not seen the videos that we have uploaded this past week from from our visit there, uh, from their manufacturing and the fact that they're growing their own tobacco for, for nicotine that's used in e-liquid and the science investment that they have done. Uh, but we were talking about this even with the owners of VDLV and the owners of Team Enic in France there that, that we partnered up with. And uh, and and. I think that they're getting frustrated as well too because they're all missing the big the biggest key and that is you know a, a public relations firm uh yet it be you know a European local or global or federal or whatever we want to call it because even all the work that they're doing um 
it's going to be just like we're doing right now in our bubble. You know, we're going to take this work. We're going to share it. Patrick's going to see it. Kevin's going to see it. We're all going to say, hey, vaping's better than smoking, which, you know, I mean, we all know this. <laughs> I mean, we're sitting here on a Thursday night at nine o'clock doing a show because we are passionate. And we know that vaping is better than smoking. So I think that that it all boils down to, uh, I mean, at what point are we going to look at all the mistakes that we've done in the last decade and say enough's enough? We really need to change the narrative here and the only way to change the narrative is to get the people that don't smoke and don't vape to realize that this product is less harmful i don't even think it's a matter of smokers right now i <laughs> i think that that it, or a matter of vapors i think it's the public opinion needs to shift on this product and i think the only way that to do that is to is to change the narrative in the in media and that's going to cost money I, yeah. I agree. We do. We need to get that information out. Uh, it's not just smokers that we need to get on our side. We need the average citizen to understand, like Dimitri said, that that vaping is better than smoking. But I think the also the the, the average citizen needs to understand the, the the crap that we've gone through. Like since day one, all of these groups against us, you know, our mm -hmm. rights getting taken away from flavors, uh, the, the like the crazy taxes that they want to put, like just everything that we've been through in addition, because I want that to carry and send a message to other people, because what what happens when it's something that you want, that you enjoy, that you like, that they come after and they try to take away, right? Because yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to yeah. happen. So not only do we need to make people aware of the fact, the fact that vaping is far safer than smoking, right? But also the fact that we have been trying to do everything the right way from day one, and they continue to take things away from us. The people so, need to understand that. One of the things that I uh, that, that we noticed recently is that uh, uh, FCTC, which is a tobacco convention, like it is one of two conventions that the WHO have. They have one that's sort of the health convention, the, the human rights convention, and then they have the tobacco one. Well, the, the, the people behind the tobacco one have started to reframe their mission statement. And now it's including things like caffeine. Now it's including things like sugar. Now it's including things like alcohol. They want to be the sin convention. They want to have the control just, over all Patrick, of the vices. Patrick, just tell me that they're not including porn. Are, are they <laughs> that just, I, I like, not this year, I, I but maybe wanna, next year. They, they, they have sure. to regulate okay. right. the entire okay. internet. I don't think that they can do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who's next? That's, but yeah, that's all the fun stuff. They're, they're trying to take over the fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I get it, Patrick. However, again, again, we're I think we're 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 getting convoluted again. And we're losing track, and and we need to go back to the tobacco harm reduction aspect of this. You know, I I I I am so frustrated by a lot of the advocates, especially the last couple of years, that have you know divulged into CBD and Delta Eight and heat not burn, and you know, and and, and look, you know, I get it. But we we have not won our fight yet, and, and here we are now. You know, shifting our attention to to everything that's that's uh, that that that's going on in this world. The reason why I think that at least the four people that I'm looking at my screen right now are doing what we're doing is because we quit smoking with vaping, and we believe that this product can save billion lives. Right? That, that's that's why I am doing it. Uh, and um, and I, and we have not even scratched the surface of trying to get that point across. And um, so I, I have nothing against all those products. I don't have nothing against sugar or alcohol, but let them fight their own fight, goddammit. You know, what, what are we going to do about us? You know, <laughs> you know I mean, let, let the sugar, whatever, you know, rallies happen or whatever. You know, like it's Charlie's Wonka factory, you know, come down and, and, and protest in front of the – I don't care. What are we doing? Our numbers are, are, are diminishing. People are not switching. People are going back to smoking. Um, I, where we get to the point where we have to hide behind dumpsters like we did when we were smoking, it's mm -hmm. just getting worse and worse and worse. In fact, th you know, this morning at four o'clock in the morning, I got a meeting with, with the Greek, uh, association that, that I'm uh, VP of because, uh, Greece, one of the labs, listen to this, 
One of the, the the Greek government labs pulled a shaken vape. If people don't know what a shaken vape is, it's basically flavoring in a bottle. That's all it is. There's no, it's not ready to vape. You have to add PG, VG, and nicotine to it, shake it, and then you know let it sit for a while and vape it. But one of the labs pulled one of these shaken vapes and put it in an atomizer, hit the button, and they got vapor, oh, obviously, because it's flavoring suspended in PG. <laughs> so the government said, this needs to be taxed. <laughs> this this needs to be taxed. <laughs> Not only does it need to be taxed, but this needs to go back dating to 2017, where the tax was implemented for nicotine products in Greece. Well, I should say ready-to-vape products in Greece. It started in 2017. So now they want to go back and tax five years of shaken vapes for these distributors and these manufacturers in Greece of a product that is not ready to vape. You cannot vape flavoring. Of course, if you put it in an atomizer and you hit the button, you're going to get some vapor. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the product is ready to vape. Um, so you see, I mean, the reason why I bring this up is just like it's just like one. It's it's 10 steps back every time that we try to do something. And we're, and we're talking about sugar. Talk about sugar. <laughs> There's like the guy in Indianapolis Colts. We're talking about playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> we, we have to win something, folks, or else it's just going to get worse and worse. And that's why a lot of people have given up. A lot of people are not involved anymore. A lot of people deflated. A lot of people say, "Well, we're done." You know, and I, I mean, I can't blame them. We we have not, especially here in the U.S. I know this is a global thing, but I mean, as far as the U.S. is concerned, we haven't had one win. I, I, what? I, I, what? I mean, I, if I'm if I'm mistaken, please correct me, gentlemen, since you guys are are a little bit more knowledgeable than me. But we have not had no. one influential win not that is win. going to change policy. That's not a okay, big That's win. what I'm talking about. Changing policy is a win. Not once. I mean the the sad fact of the matter is, um, you know, every time somebody comes up with an idea, and you know, Demetrius has done this more than once, come up with a great idea. Mm -hmm. Nobody shows up, or people poo poo it. It gets boycotted. It's costs money, talked, or talked about it Tuesday on the show, on the DP show. It gets boycotted by our own industry. But again, forget about me. I'm done. I'm out of the picture. I'm I, put me to the side. What are we doing now? What are we doing now? How many people are getting involved now? I will tell you. Less. I will tell you. Less than 100 people in America right now are fighting for vaping. And 95% of them are consumers. What, what do you mean? If I, if I, if I done. Uh, post something on Twitter, that doesn't count? Or if I, I share no. a, a Kassar call to action? It does not. It does not count mm. at all. And again, if I'm mistaken, I'd, I'd be more than happy to be corrected on this. But you know, in order to reignite uh, harm reduction in America, we have to change policy. And in order to change policy, we're definitely not going to do it the way that we're going right now. As long as the PMTA path for nicotine vapor exists. There will never be an open vapor product approved. Fight me if you think I'm wrong. Uh, no, I've said the same thing and gotten hate mail. So please, there's not any hate mail. So we're sitting there spending money on stupid shit. What we should be doing is gathering these huge companies at a table and say we need to put this guy that released this tax later today. You know, to to the Congress. We need to take people like that. And put them in front of the TV on prime time, whatever it costs, to let Americans know that what the government is doing is criminal. Yeah, that is criminal. No, that guy was going to be on our show, but then the right That's before he was going to start. Yeah, great. Show. I mean, it's fantastic. He's going to be on your he, show, and he's going to say, you know, <laughs> vaping amazing uh, things to tax can causes smoking. Great. We all know this, Patrick, and everybody's going to watch your show knows this. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting yeah. fired up because this is the answer. And it's been the answer for the last three years. Yeah. And yeah. nobody, nobody, I, I, what, I mean, what else do we have to say? What else do we, have? there's nothing else that we can do unless we change the pathway of how nicotine, the, T, the PMTA was not, was created to eliminate competition. The, the goal of the PMTA and why Philip Morris signed off on the PMTA is because they know only a handful of companies and very product specific will be able to go through this process one day when 
less harmful nicotine products would be available. Yep. Don't forget that that these companies have been working on heat not burn since the 80s. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so exactly. as long as that pathway remains the same, vaping will never win in America. Right? So if you see a company like Iquos putting out uh a meeting minutes from the FDA to their share shareholders and telling they told the FDA a couple of days ago, hey, listen, if you remove IQOS from the market, 20,000 people in America that use IQOS are going to go back to cigarettes. And they made a huge public announcement about this. I mean, they got press releases out. It got picked up from 15 major um, um, media outlets mm -hmm. for 20,000. Listen, I, I mean, every life counts. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not disputing the 20,000 people. I'm not by any means. Don't think that I'm a killer or something like that. How about us, though? We're at least yeah. 2 million. We're at least 2 million vapors and nobody's talking about it. That we're going to go back to cigarettes. Like nobody's talking about. It. Hey, not even that though. I mean, we had Skip Murray on the show. We had Richard Pruin on the show the other night. And like me, they have some diagnoses that, that cause them to either take, you know, really powerful pharmaceuticals or nicotine. Nicotine sent, tends to, uh, to help the symptoms of, of these conditions. And both of them during the show said, I cut my nicotine down. And that's when all of my symptoms came in. And both of them said they were both of them con considering ending their lives. I mean, this is powerful shit. Uh, and it, it drives me crazy because our people hear that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, Inco's people hear that stuff. Uh, Charles... Uh, Gardner, Dr. Charles Gardner, you know, he's touting the the, uh, the the benefits of nicotine for people in those communities. But guess what? You ban nicotine, you get rid of vaping, and they either only have the choice of a low-powered patch or uh, crappy, you know, going back to smoking or going on a, a, a cocktail of pharmaceuticals that that changes the way their brain works and makes it so that they can't participate in life and they're going to end their lives phil phil let me ask you something phil i mean we're in a privileged position being in this industry as long as we have we, we really don't have to but imagine I, I i just want to get your thoughts phil like if if you weren't phil busardo if you were phil smith right and uh, you found this Greek guy on the internet, just very sexy, and helped you quit smoking, and supported you all this time. And then you, you know, you were able to quit smoking, and you were happy. You found your liquid. You found your favorite setup. And then you weren't able to get it anymore. What would you do? Yeah, uh, you, you would have to make a, a, a real good, uh, a real strong decision at that point, right? You, you are you are you strong enough to? to find something else are you strong enough to just not vape and not smoke anymore or since you walk in every single store and there's a pack of cigarettes right there in front of your face right no problems there they're they're everywhere right uh, yeah. are you going to go back to being a smoker yeah you know, this this is something that we talked about you know maybe the faces of vaping shouldn't have been younger people right maybe the faces of vaping should have been older people could you i mean could you imagine somebody 65 70 years old i mean like their entire lives they have tried to get off of smoking nothing has worked for these people right and and they found something that that actually worked they they, they found tobacco harm reduction they found vaping they've got their little setup they 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 found their their favorite flavor right and and this 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 little this woman this 65 70 year old woman walks in the store and the guy says I, you, you can't have your flavor anymore. I'm sorry. You can't have it. Like, like what are we doing? What, 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 do, you, do you, I mean, do you understand the, the people who this is going to affect? Because it's not just the kids, it's adults, right? Do you understand what that's going to do to somebody? You know, that, that, that thing that they have that they finally found that, 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 that it's taken the monkey off their back, it's released them. And now you're taking it away from them. Just, just, just the stress of that alone is going to push people back to smoking. Why? Because that's exactly how smoking works. It's your friend. 
that has gone along with you for the for the ride. Have you ever tried quitting smoking? The first time something traumatic happens in your life, what do you do? Right back to the cigarettes. Happened to me twice. A year I wasn't smoking. My grandmother passed away, right back to cigarettes. Like I never even quit, right? So a lot of these people, they're like just right on the edge and you give them, you throw something traumatic their way, you take away their favorite device, their favorite flavor, their favorite, you know, what? They're going to go right back to smoking. Because it's that it's that trauma that that they're gonna have, and they're gonna they're gonna need they're gonna have to deal with that trauma. And how they're gonna deal with the trauma? They're gonna go back to smoking. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, uh, it's definitely it's 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 definitely an option that that I mean, it's readily available. And uh, and if you really need to get nicotine, that's that's the route that you're gonna go. Um, I I find it. I, I wish we had. I wish we had data, you know, which, which we don't, we, we just haven't been organized enough in, in America to be able to pull numbers like that to see how many people have gone. Cause there's a lot of people that, that have gone back to smoking a lot, um, in states that, that implemented, uh, outrageous taxes and states that implemented flavor bans, uh, now with the PACT Act. Uh, in effect with USPS people in rural areas that can't get their orders. It, it would be tremendous help for us to be able to get that data. Unfortunately, we can't. But I will tell you, um, just as somebody that like monitors a lot, you know, trends and business numbers and sales, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a crazy numbers guy. I guarantee you that from the buildup that we did from 2010 to 2016, uh, I think that we have lost half, mm -hmm. half I'd agree. of, of what we built, um, easily, which is a tremendous loss for the industry as a whole, but it's also a tremendous, uh, loss for public health in America. So you get guys like, uh, Cliff Douglas, who was a huge anti-smoking guy, he, you know, just you know blasted vaping blah 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 um recently he's he's done a, a 180 and he's written uh you know a paper you know telling everybody in tobacco control that you know it's a mistake that they need to you know get out of their little uh pull their head out of the sand and start looking at tobacco harm reduction blah 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 i didn't know this i mean and I don't know that it was ever publicly available, but there's a video that they've been playing up during the scope thing that basically says that the reason he did that was that he had a family member who was vaping, um, listen to that rhetoric and turn around and went back to smoking. And then I guess got sick. So, you know, I hate to say it, but does, does somebody in every one of these guys families have to go back to smoking because they've said bad things about vaping before they'll believe or is it i mean is it blind ideology or is it just m malice no i mean i think there's there's a multitude of, of 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 reasons why people went back to smoking uh you know but i mean i'm sorry but i, I can only blame our industry I, I mean i'm sorry i mean we can put all the taxes and the flavor bans and all that but any other serious industry would have seen this coming especially at times where this industry was working with 150 and 200 percent profit like nobody wants to talk about stuff like that i guess i'll be the bad guy and i'll get the hate mail from the industry because we forgot how much yeah. money this industry was making and i've seen it i've seen numbers i've seen figures <laughs> we I, failed never, as an industry we failed as an industry to protect what we were building and, uh, and this themselves. has happened in other industries as well too this is not just this is not unique to our industry no. but the biggest blame goes to our industry that couldn't protect it and great cliff douglas is great it's fantastic but again it's an echo chamber of what he is saying because the people that need to listen to him the people that need to see his work are never going to be able to do it unless this industry has a pr firm to be able to take Cliff Douglas and put him on CNN for four minutes on a piece on vaping where he says, yeah, two years ago, I was, I was hesitant. I was skeptical. I've seen the data now. I've seen the science. And I highly recommend people switch to vaping if they're smokers, if they've tried everything available and they can't quit smoking. That's what we need. That is the win for the industry. That's what turns everything around. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it is kind of funny, though. And we talk about, uh, you know, you're talking about the, the media thing. So a few weeks ago, we had a big deal. Um, the lovely Amanda uh, Wheeler went to the, you know, conference in, in the UK and spoke, gave an amazingly passionate speech. Great speech. I, I was doing my show the next day and uh, somebody who I won't name is in the chat room saying, we're going to, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. You know, we're going to do a PR thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it, you know, that, and that's been, what, four weeks ago. Um, I said, you know, and I, I responded to him live on the show. I said, look, I said, unless you can uh, unask with, you know, probably close to, I don't know, $20 million now, because the price has probably gone up from when you guys were, were shopping around looking for numbers. I said, it's probably doubled by now. Yeah, I mean, for a year-round campaign, you're looking at twenty million for sure. Yeah. I mean, for a year, for a year-round, I mean, if you want to have a really, you know, effective, but you got to do baby steps. You know, we had nine weeks for two million dollars. I don't think that's a lot of money. I mean, you think two two million dollars is a lot of money? It's not. It really is not. Well, I mean, not you take the top, to five, the, the top segment. five, the top five, the top five companies in in America right now, as far as vapor, open vapor is concerned, all do um, over fifty million dollars a year. You know, for them to to spend half a million, especially at that time, which was two and a half years ago, three years ago, um, would have been nothing. Yeah. But again, if it 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 look, I mean, if if Amanda or AVM or anybody else that is working on something like this, I will fully support it. I will get out there and I will promote it and I'll do whatever I possibly can to make it work. Unlike. When we try to do it, we're our own our own industry boycotted. <laughs> I'll I'll get out there and I'll I'll help. I'm 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 begging for somebody to do it. Um but the sad realization is that it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Yep. Yeah. So uh you guys do a show called the smoker show, or have you are you still doing that show? Well, we haven't I mean, done it in a while, but um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely on the on the plate when the when the time is needed. I mean, Phil, we did what 148 episodes of the yeah yeah we, we did a lot of episodes. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you uh, on on the smoker show because I just had a, a, an experience the other day. Um, we were doing the premiere of the VDLV, uh, the the science behind the company, and um, there was a a woman in the chat, and her name was Bridget, and she she mentioned something about. You know, her father um, tried vaping and he failed and she wanted to get it. I said, look, I said, just get a hold of me. I said, let's let's watch the premiere. I said, but just get a hold of me. Let's talk a little bit on Facebook. So I wound up talking to her and, you know, her, her father tried something in a C store. That's one of the biggest problems with C stores. There's no guidance. There's no there's no hand holding. There's no question and answer. It's just you're picking up something. And if it doesn't work and then if it doesn't work, you're like, ah, the vaping thing doesn't work. Right. That's why that's why the vape shop is so important, right? But now I, she wasn't close to him, so I, I know if I send him something, he's eventually going to have to buy his consumables. He's going to have to buy his liquid. He's going to have to buy his coils. And I asked her. I said, "Does he live close to a vape shop?" And and right there, I get so worried about the environment that I'm about to send this guy to. He's a 65-year-old guy, right? What's Dimitri left? said it earlier. He said it earlier. He said, we're not against, we are not against the THC, the CBD, the Delta-8, the Kratom, all that. We're not against it, okay? But there's still a negative stigma that, that goes along with a lot of that stuff with, with some people, right? And be, because we're combining it, I think it's going to make the industry look worse and worse and worse as we go. And I was hesitant to send this guy, this 65 year old guy to a vape shop that I don't know. I know nothing about because that's been the trend, right? We're seeing what's happening with vape shops, right? So that was just an experience that, that I had the other day. And um, I, I did wind up sending the gentleman something. Bridget is going to work with uh, her father uh, to try to get him off of the cigarettes, but I think it's becoming more and more of a challenge to even send somebody to a vape shop or talk to them 
about tobacco harm reduction because I'm just I'm just afraid of the environment that I'm going to send these people into. Go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. You, you haven't spoken a lot. And now you're finally speaking. I interrupt oh, you. Go ahead. No, just that if 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 I called you and my my sisters in Tennessee and I say, where am I going to send my sister? What's the closest shop to where she is? You are going to say this one. And right. I'm going to, with, without reservation at all, say this is where you're going to go and you're going to talk to Bob because Demi said so or Phil said so in New York or Patrick said so in Texas. We don't have that. We really, I mean, I know where Nick is. I know where James is, but I don't know a whole lot of people off the top yeah. of my head, you know? So that's, right. Right. There, there are places. Safe. I mean, if this guy was from an area that I was familiar with, yeah, go to this shop, go talk to this yep. person. Right. If they were local, yeah, go to this shop, go, go, go yep. talk to this person. Right. That's easy. But now yep. I don't know where this guy is. I don't know what their vape shops look like around him. No I don't know idea what they're going to say. Yeah. What are they going to say? Was this somebody that worked at VLDV? No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. She was just she was just uh, just watching the uh, the premiere. Oh, watching the premiere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, to, to, to expand on what Phil said, you know, we did, again, we did like 148 ethic episodes. We have three seasons of The Smoker Show. We've covered pretty much everything that we need to cover. But now the the the, the industry has shifted. Um, pretty much every product that we could recommend is illegal in America. <laughs> for, for, it's another right? huge problem. Right? Again, which is a huge problem. Again, I don't have any problem recommending illegal products to somebody that's gonna, gonna help them quit smoking don't get me wrong i'm i'm mm -hmm. not uh, I'm, I'm not disputing that as well but but again wh where do we go like how do we tell the pact act has made shipping illegal you know uh through at least usps fedex and whatever i mean through usps and then the other two companies aren't <laughs> shipping so we have to use these local shippers now so i mean where do we go from here and and the product availability in america is not what it is in Europe, unfortunately. So even if we, you know, we do the smoker show and we show a new product or something, you know, that's that me and Phil work a lot with Inikin to create products that are for beginners. But if they can't get it anywhere, you know, I mean, it, so there, there's so many. Like we we created this database of smoker show. We tell people to go and just watch the the replays because there's tons of information on there. But for us to continue to do a smoker show. At this point, it really needs, you know, I mean, what are we going to talk about? It, it, he's, he, it's, it's more of a depressing show at this point it really than is. anything yeah. else. It really is. You're absolutely right. You know, we're, we're going to do the show. We're going we're gonna to say, okay, this is what you need to get. This is what you need to do. Look at this product. This is a really good product. This is the kind of liquid that you should get. And by the way, you can't get any of it. Right. Thanks, Or America. if you do... You're breaking the law, but at least you're going to quit smoking. You know what? <laughs> so it is, it is, it is, it is a very difficult proposition. I mean, we're trying through the DP show, which is more of, you know, the, the DP show, at least for the last three, four episodes has been like, you know, 35, 45 minutes, in, you know, information or whatever information we want to push at the beginning. And then an hour and 15 minutes of me and Phil being me and Phil uh, and <laughs> DPing everybody. So, I, but. So we always try to have that inf that informational portion in there, whether it's going to be the DP show or the smoker show. But again, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, if you look at the numbers, which again, I'm a huge algorithm guy, whether it's going to be social media, whether it's going to be YouTube, we've seen a steady decline in, in the last two years. We're, we're basically, you know, yeah, we have, the you know, our followers that are like, you know, passionate and they're there. And, you know, we'll get three, 4,000 replays. People will listen to it, you know, that want to listen to it. But from there on, where, where are we reaching? We're not really reaching anybody. And especially new people are very difficult to bring in because for the reasons that were mentioned earlier. There is not a shop. I mean, there's like in, in Tennessee, like we say, you know, there's, there's five shops that I can send that don't sell combustibles. Five. You know? Um, uh, but by combustibles, I mean some other form of combustible in their shop, and their sign says vape shop, or, uh, or, or, or pipes, or, or you know these other um, uh, hybrid uh, model style uh, vape shops, or smoke shops, or um, so. How do you how do you guide somebody, uh, or somebody that doesn't feel comfortable going into these places to to quit smoking? It's extremely it's extremely difficult. This is where. You know, big tobacco products are beneficial uh, because you can say, hey, go get a views. There you go. You're done. 
to tobacco. It's a, it's a cartridge-based system. Uh, and uh, I wish you luck. I hope it helps you, and I hope it, I hope you can quit with that because that's what the government has said that that you can that that's appropriate for the protection of public health. You know, I, I think it's more more than a problem of just how do you guide somebody. I think the other problem is not as many people want to be guided anymore, right? Why is that? Because of the nonstop battering of vaping and the misinformation about vaping and the fear mongering about vaping. And, and, and the, just the constant barrage from mainstream media. You know, this is why most people think that, that vaping is worse than smoking at this point. This is why people think that nicotine causes cancer, right? The, 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 there's been no- Even education. doctors. Huh? Even, Even doctors, doctors. yes. Yeah. There, there has been no real good education. So, I, I and I've said this uh, on the Smoker Show, I've said this on the DP show, let's say everything was rosy and hunky, everything was, we got flavors, we got devices, everything was fine, right? We still have to change the mind of smokers because they think, based on everything that they have read and seen in mainstream media, that, well, the, the cigarettes are going to kill me, you know, in 20 years, but if I, if I I'm going to die next week if I use that, right? So yeah. it, it's more, it's more than just, you know, how do I guide people? It's like, give me the people that, that I can guide. Those, those people are dwindling. There's not as many of them anymore because of the bullshit that we see in mainstream media. Yeah. And I mean, they also, matter. also I, I, me... honestly, I honestly believe that they do not care anymore. They do not care about the truth. They do not care about facts. All they fucking care about is their agenda because here's what happens. They don't care. I'm, here's a story. It's completely made up. I don't care. I'm going to put it out there. Oh, I have to retract it? All right. Okay, I will. Yeah, no problem. Five days later in a paragraph hidden, buried somewhere. Oh, there. I retracted it, right? <laughs> Damage is already done. Yeah. We've seen this over and over and over again. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter. Mainstream media needs to be taken to court. It, it, it doesn't matter how many uh, wonderful pieces Alex Norcia uh, publishes uh, <laughs> uh, in Filter Magazine, um, how much media coverage we get in vapor media or in the handful of friendly, small distributed, uh, you know, online uh, newspapers or news media sites that actually put out a, a truthful piece um, until uh, Fox News or CNN or the New York Times or you know, you know, the Washington Post or any of these big, huge media outlets actually put out on big, bold letters, vaping is safer than smoking. People that Stop. smoke should switch to vaping. Stop. Nothing's going to happen. See, yeah. When Cuomo said it's better than smoking, but so what? Wouldn't you have thought that that would be like the biggest news piece ever? No. No, no, no. Kevin, Absolutely. you know what I no. would have done then? You know what I would have done? Because that actually coincided a lot with the timing that we were talking about. I would have I would have clipped that and I would have had that in a commercial running on exactly. 53 channels, 9,000 commercials a month. That's what I would have done. And, we had the opportunity, nope. the door was open, and what did we do? Instead of like in, uh, knocking this out of the uh, out of the park as a home run, we struck out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, because, because that's, not that will, that's not sexy. But what's sexy is, is if you run it 9,000 times a month and people start listening to it and you're spending money with these channels and then these channels bring you on and they yeah. and they ask you, they're like, well, I mean, I didn't say it. The governor of New York said that it's better than this month. Here it is. Here's a clip of him. Because that's this is how media works. It works when you spend money, they're going to get the message across. If you're not spending money, they're not. And by the way, I just, I just want to bring this up real quick because I did see some comments about Jewel in the chat. You know, fuck Jewel. Um, it's a good product for, for people to smoke. No. Let me tell you something. For all of you out there that are, that are even our advocates that are, that are saying this about Jewel, Jewel's own data shows. The own, its own data. Jewel did a lot of research on their product before they launched. Mm-hmm. Even Jules data says that flavors are vital for adult smokers to transition from combustible tobacco. And what does Jules do? They pull their flavors off the market. Voluntarily. So, I don't want to hear any, any fucker telling me, okay, this is clearly a big tobacco play. 
clearly a big tobacco play, appeasing the regulators until competition is removed. That way we can put the products inside. So if any advocate tells you, oh, yeah, Juul is a great product. Uh, no. When your mission on their website, go back and look at the archives. When their mission says flavors help, we've done our own research. And trust me, they have tons of science hidden away now in the Philip Morris or Aldria, you know, offices. Tons of science that can back up their work. But instead of filing a PMTA for those products, they bend over to the regulators and said, okay, well, we we're going to remove it. And then you open up the door for puff bars to come in and dominate the market and ruin even more so everything that we have built. No. No. Fuck Jewel. Fuck Jewel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of puff bars, <laughs> there was a news piece I saw today. Um, Apparently, uh, Raja uh, it you know, Stop it. made a statement about uh, synthetic nicotine, and they reached out to uh, Next Generation Labs, and and they got a they got a statement from Ron Tully. Great statement, by the way. Yeah, I think but, I think uh, Ron I mean, Tully's response was fantastic, actually. Well, the, the you know we're not they're not our clients. You know? like, except except the puff bar, I think that Ron Tully. Listen, I'm not I'm not Ron Tully, Tully fanboy, uh, by any means. Uh, but I mean, the guy is absolutely right when he says you cannot fault us because your legal system and your regulatory system does not cover this product. This is innovation in this industry. And just because you didn't think about it in 2009 when you signed the Tobacco Control Act after the deal you made with Altria, it's not my fault. In fact. I said this on the show Tuesday night on the DP show. This is a great opportunity for synthetic nicotine to open a different pathway within the FDA. The FDA, if they're smart and they truly care about the protection of public health, you know what they should do? They should say, hey, listen, synthetic nicotine does not fall under the Tobacco Control Act. It does not need a PMTA. But let's sit down and work with the industry and create a regulatory pathway for this product to go on the market with synthetic nicotine, GMP, Manufacturing standards, some testing, no longitudinal cohort studies, no nothing. Let's set some strict guidelines, some strict regulations, but let's encourage synthetic nicotine to come onto the market for smokers that would choose that as an alternative to smoking. This is a great opportunity for the FDA to do it. Of course, I'm not going to listen to me, but I'm telling you that if I'm smart, if I'm Ron Tully and I got some money behind me, this is the pathway that they should take. I think what Ron Tully, you know, I mean, he also sent a letter to Puff Bars. And you know what Puff Bar's response is going to be to Crash Morty? Yeah, it's going to be like two fingers up, you know. But, um, but but I think this is a great opportunity for synthetic nicotine to make a play and say, hey, look, since we're not covered, what are you going to do? Take us pharmaceutical? What are you going to do? Take us through the Tobacco Control Act? Clearly, clearly synthetic nicotine is not is not included in the Tobacco Control Act. No. I, don't, I will argue that with anybody. But no. the FDA could say under the CTP, Let's create a new pathway for this synthetic nicotine that does not require all the stringent bullshittery that you have to go through for a PMTA. It's a perfect opportunity for tobacco harm reduction, Ooh. to reduce death, to reduce disease, and to help smokers in America right now with synthetic nicotine. Well, you and I both know that, but I mean, the, the nicotine, even FDA knows it's not the nicotine that's the most harmful part of vaping. I mean, they're still going to demand all that testing, you know, the HPAC testing and all that stuff to make sure that there's nothing harmful in the flavors. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, listen, I, okay, okay, I'm taking your argument. I'm taking your argument. But again, synthetic nicotine is not covered under, the, so it's not a tobacco no, it's not. product with it's flavors. Not. You're wrong. I'm, I'm not telling you that you're not smart, Patrick, by any means. Don't, don't get offended. All I'm I saying will. is that synthetic nicotine is not a tobacco product. So you're not talking about a tobacco product that's flavored. No. See, this is the difference when we're talking about flavored tobacco products. We're talking about cigarettes, cigarillos, e-liquid that is considered a tobacco product under the Tobacco Control Act of 2009. Synthetic yes. nicotine is not a tobacco product. No, you're right. So flavors don't fall under the flavored tobacco product category is what I'm saying. No, but if you were going to give them regulation over synthetic nicotine products flavored synthetic nicotine products, they're still going to be assholes 
and demand all of the testing well, on I, the flavors. I mean, I can't, I mean, I can't help that. But what's going to happen is by the time even this is promoted, states are going to ban synthetic nicotine anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. So you're going to see at least seven or eight legislations next year coming that that are going to ban synthetic nicotine, just like cool. they did with flavors. But by the time we get any movement, it'll be it'll be banned in half the states anyway. But I, mean, I, can, did, right? I can be a little bit optimistic and say, and, and you know, I, as if I was Ron Tully or if I was anybody in the synthetic nicotine market right now, I would go sit down with the FDA and say, hey, listen, let's create a, some parameters, some restrictions and put this product on the market do under right. a new pathway of the FDA as an alternative nicotine product, just like you do with um, nicotine toothpicks or <clears throat> longenses or something to else, something that would not qualify under the the uh, definition of a tobacco product, uh, of a nicotine tobacco product, as it's defined right now within the FDA. I, I just want to say when uh, when Dimitri uh, starts off like this, uh, when he gets going, uh, he's incredibly sexy. I don't know if you noticed that. Like I am, <laughs> I am so wildly turned on right now. I'm actually working on a a, a synthetic Dimitri. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it is it a moist flavor? <laughs> Absolutely, very, moist. very yeah, saturated. I, I fully, sa I, I prefer fully saturated. Yes, then. Fully I prefer saturated. wet, personally. Oh my god! This is so funny. Uh, Bruni says a lot of hate towards Joe. No, there's not hate, man. There's not hate. You're absolutely wrong. Don't, 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 don't buy into this. These advocates that are pushing this this narrative, man. No, if you truly care about your mission of helping smokers, you need to have flavored products on the market. Period. Period. Don't buy this. Don't buy this. Oh, yeah, it was a great way. It was not. You know, I never understood uh, the argument uh, against flavors, and I, I, made, I made this argument in the past. Uh, so we need to identify why kids are, are, are using or why kids were using the Jewel, now the Puff Bar, right? Uh, and, and, you know, I, I still believe that it was not uh, about the flavor because when they took their flavors off, you know, the kids were still using the Jewel, right? Um, it's because of the, the high nicotine strength. It's because of the, the, the head rush, the buzz that they get. But my, my, what I, what I couldn't understand is, well, it, this is where regulators don't understand. They don't get it. Right. So when you take flavors away, the kids are still going to get the product because they want the buzz. So what are they going to be forced to get? They're going to be forced to get tobacco flavor. So in effect, Aren't you training kids to like cigarettes, to like tobacco? You know, I mean, if you're if you're worried about, you know, if you're worried about kids going from 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 vaping to smoking, aren't you creating that pathway? Aren't, isn't that what you're doing? This, this is why, like, regulators, the smart people are not as smart as they think they are. That's they're right. creating a gateway to smoke. Yes, absolutely. Bill, they're they, for they're creating fuck's a gateway. sake. That's exactly what they're doing. Flavor yeah. bands are a gateway to cigarettes. They are. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's no for question. kids and for adults as well too. I don't think it I I don't I wouldn't separate the two honestly. I no. I think Phil makes a very valid point, but I would expand that point to adults as well too. Part of our sensation of getting away from cigarettes is the fact that it doesn't taste nasty anymore. That's and so, that's I, and so I, and true. I think that's, that's extremely vital. Whether you're two, you enjoy a cherry, uh, or whether you're ninety, you're enjoying that, a cherry because it's sweet and delicious. That's so true. Like going back to the example that I gave before, you know, the sixty-five or the seventy-year-old woman who goes into the vape shop. She finally found her flavor. She finally got off cigarettes. You know, she's she's vaping something like you know, like a delicious watermelon peach, the number one best-selling flavor in the unsalted line, something like that, right? Um, and now she goes in there and she tries to get that flavor. She said no. You have to use a tobacco flavor. Wait a second. You're telling me that that all this while I've been trying to get off of cigarettes. I finally got off cigarettes. Now you're going to make me use something that tastes like a cigarette. I mean, you're like that's like yeah. that's like a, a nail in the coffin for a lot of people, right? Not only is it traumatic, but now is it's traumatic, and and, you, and you're forcing them to use something that tastes like a cigarette. They're, they're going to be smoking before you know it. It's, it's God. God damn, nothing makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, argu the argument on flavors is completely moot. I mean, it, 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 it it's just what they have to grasp onto right now to justify what they're doing. That's all That's all it is. Um, flavors were not available when I was 15 and I put my, my, my first cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> it was definitely flavors. It, it, it tasted it tasted horrible, but, but uh, I still started to smoke. I think that you know, when you're looking at pods, when you're looking at disposables, I think that the younger crowd is always going to gravitate to that for various reasons. 
Um, one of them being technology, right? It's easy. It's quick. It's not like, uh, you know, us, we can sit down and take a device that has screens and 17 menus and stuff like that. You know, we we're a little bit more. So, so having that, that, that product that's easy for people to use to get their nicotine cleaner, is not a bad thing to have, but if you're really tr truly looking to convert, meaning you, you, you want your citizens to transition from combustible tobacco into a less harmful no, they don't. Uh, alternative way of getting nicotine, then you need to have all the varieties and all the, the different um, options available to see what fits best for each consumer of tobacco right now. And once you start limiting those, once you start limiting those, you're putting people back into that same task of smoking. Even if you only have the views or even if you have the jewel tobacco, that's the only available tobacco harm reduction, it's not going to change public health. You know, you're going to have dual use. You're going to have initiation. People are going to be using both. You're not going to be able to shift to, to get that, that net positive public health as it relates as a whole, as the FDA is looking for through a PMTA. You're not going to be able to do it. And sadly, they've been telling us for years, every all four of us on the screen, any way to quit is the best way to quit. And then we Correct. found that best way to quit for ourselves happens to be the four of us that have found vaping and now it's not that's not right we don't like that no no you have to quit our way mm -hmm. yeah. and and now now it's not about remember it used to be about the cigarettes you didn't smoke mm -hmm. and now it one one all it takes is one one yeah. so it even one smoke cigarette is not acceptable to these people anymore like if, if you if you smoke one cigarette a year you're a smoker yeah yeah well that's according to stanton glance and uh you know stanton glance is uh, really panicking the last two three weeks he's really put out some junk stuff out because the fda approved uh well gave market authorization to the views product and i'm sure there's going to be a couple more big tobacco products that are going to get market authorization within the next two three months so he's gone into full panic mode don't forget that the Views product, according to the FDA, according to the FDA, not according to Views, according to the FDA, the Views product is less harmful than smoking, and it's appropriate for the protection of public health, because that's what a market authorization says. Right. And once again, once again, not even, not even RJR is touting that right now. This is, this is when you, when we're talking about these advocates supporting these products or going public on Twitter and saying, oh, this is a great thing. You know, screw all of you, all of you that are doing that. I'm sorry if I offend you, but that is the truth. Because not even RJR has used that. Because they know, number one, the product's inferior, right? They know, number two, nobody's going to use it. And they know, number three, who cares? We're still selling cigarettes. Whether you use the views or not, who cares? My competition is out. Who's my competition? The creamy, robust Phil Busada with the number one selling watermelon peach. Um, the Dimitri with a great Zenith 2 tank that's helped millions of people quit smoking. All the competition has gone out. So not even RGR took that possibility. Instead of RGR being on every channel and saying, hey, look, the FDA just took this piece of shit cartomizer from 2004, but said, said this product is appropriate for prediction, but they're not even doing it. They're just sitting quietly. They're just sitting in a corner like, okay, let the government take out yep. all of our competition. Yep. We're going to dominate. We're going to monopolize nicotine intake for U.S. citizens, and everybody's going to be happy. It's so don't give anything. me this bullshit. We're having major advocates in our industry tout the views market authorization when, it, when its own company is not. Get the fuck out of here with that. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm, I'm sorry. I got a little, a little bit too fired up. There. I'm I'm, I, I don't I'm, know, I'm, Phil. I'm what actually, about you? <laughs> Yo, I'm so aroused who, right now. You kidding me? Who, who is touting the? I haven't. I I must. Oh be in please, a come planet. on, Patrick. Don't make me say names. Don't say. You can just look on Twitter and you'll know. <laughs> uh, damn, I'm trying to get some heat started here. Um, no, no, and, and I'll explain because Steve Mal makes a really good point. Says open vapor has the same ingredients as a used flavor. You're absolutely correct. But Steve. Just to clarify, and everybody understands, the PMTA path is product specific. Mm -hmm. Product specific means that your product has to meet the definition of appropriate for protection for public health. Now, in the morning when I get up, 
I'm an open vapor user. In the morning when I get up, I want to vape strawberry cheesecake with my coffee. In the, the evening, new, when I have a nice pants. little margarita, I might vape feels, you know, number one selling unsalted watermelon peach. And at night before I go to bed, I might have to have, you know, a little cooling, you know, PP tears or whatever. I might use three or four different flavor products in, in, in one day. Mm -hmm. That does not qualify as it by no means, by no stretch of the man, not even close. Would you be able to get a PMTA through that? Does that make any sense? You have to show to the FDA that I was a smoker. I used Phil's number one selling unsalted watermelon peach. <laughs> I continue to use his liquid and I have stayed off cigarettes for two years. This is what you have to show to the FDA, which is virtually impossible to do for open vapor, 510 connections, refillable tanks, various flavored liquid, tobacco, even for tobacco liquid, it's not going to get a PMTA. That's why this path is not appropriate for, for our products as well. Too. Well, and you got to consider that that particular product is that those, you know, specific liquid ingredients with a specific cotton, with specific wire in the coil, specific batteries, it, it's all that one specific thing. It has nothing to, I mean, you know, I saw somebody in here, uh, and, and I'm not picking on you, I promise, uh, mentioned flavored alcohol. Now, flavored alcohol, I mean, alcohol in general um, is one of the most heavily regulated industries in the world. Um, and any every time I see somebody, and, and I've fallen prey to this myself, so I'm not, but when we point out to uh, another product in another industry, well, well, they get to do it. Why can't we? It sounds like a petulant child. I've done it, I've done it too. It, I mean, it, it is, it is not. We're not them. So pointing out that that they get to do it, so why can't we? Yeah, we should sounds, never do that. We should say, like look, we have a little science. kid pointing science, at the big yes. brother, saying, "Well, why can't he? Why why can he stay up until ten o'clock, and I have to go to bed at eight o'clock?" So you know, it's it, research it's, and data, period. It's not the same thing. So yeah, this product, the product specific testing, you could have five e-liquids that don't know, five companies that produce an e-liquid that is identical and they don't even know it just because one of them gets through because they've done the science, they've done the work, doesn't mean the other one should automatically get through either. Wait, wait. Look, I, I, I totally agree, but you know, we have the science. We have the science to prove everything that we're saying. Yeah. We have the science. The problem is that we don't have the power to promote that science and push it forward. We don't have mm -hmm. the power to do that as an industry, as stakeholders. Consu it's not the consumer's responsibility to do this. I hate to say it, but it's not the consumer's right. responsibility. No. I'm going to repeat. It's the industry stakeholder's responsibility to protect their product and to protect the right for the consumers to use that product, right? We have the science. Let me ask you. But we cannot you. take that science and move it in a way where it's going to benefit the entire industry until the industry wakes up and says, hey, how are we going to promote the science? We have tons of science. We got science coming out of our ass. We have tons of science that shows this product is, is less harmful than cigarettes. When we but, had. In a form of a PMTA, I don't care how much science, and you saw a lot of companies submitted the same folder of science, 340,000 whatever you know pages of, of, of scientific work with their PMTA. Guess what they all got? MDOs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not product specific. So yes, let's not throw all the other industries under the bus. This is just, it's not our fight. We don't have to worry about it. What we have to worry about is our industry. And if we want open vapor to go anywhere, it's time to wake up and, and change our path. No. And the other thing is, is those alcohol uh, lobbyists and the alcohol industry itself, the Alcohol Trade Association, they've got together and done all the work to make themselves look like a professional industry. Well, I mean, France is a perfect example. We saw Afnor. Right, they have their own set of standards. What AIMSA should have been, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, whenever AIMSA decided to come on the on, you know, Afnor has set of standards for their liquids. They have ranges of wattage. If we if we try, we couldn't even decide on a ball size in America. What are you talking about? Right? I mean, we we even try to have a dicetal talk here. Everybody went crazy. Can you imagine 
Can you imagine in 2017 or 2018, me and Phil came out and said, hey, listen, this coil and liquid, you can vape it from 40 to 60 watts. That's your ideal range for constituents. Immediately. Well, who the fuck are you to tell me? I'll activate mine at 80 watts. I want to do this at 80 watts. You know, I mean, this is this is what we're living for. They're trying to corner the industry. Yeah, we're trying to corner the industry. But look what they're doing in France. You have five, six serious companies that are doing scientific testing. They're backing up everything that they're putting on this bottle. They're giving range recommendation based on the ingredients. They're, they're taking flavorings, removing molecules from flavorings, making adjustments on percentages of liquids, using real-time parameters to be able to get accurate testing, meaning that this is exactly how the product is being used, not based on a robot or a smoking machine that was changed into a vapor machine. This is the stuff that we should have been doing all along here. The only thing that we were doing here is figuring out who is going to put the stupidest cartoon label on a bottle and who's going to have the biggest booth at a show. That's all the industry did here. That's it. And again, yeah. argue all you want with me, um, but that's the truth. That, I, I mean, that is, that is the truth. I have a question, Demi. Sure. When we had, when we had uh, Dr. First Linos... Uh, do a do a survey and it was a big ass survey it was the biggest one ever and it was done to the fda's alleged standard hmm. were there probably besides the four of us 10 other people in the whole freaking world talking about it at all not only were people not talking about it but it got it got tried to get boycotted by Sfada and other groups at the i mean I'm, i don't care i mean right. we had to twist arms to, to, i have to get... i have all the documentation plenty enough for the book my friend trust me i have all the screenshots i have a hard drive a terabyte hard drive down here of screenshots but everybody was against that 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 study and guess what? Those same thousand. groups that were bashing it were using it, um, uh, you know, a few months later when all the flavor bands started coming out. No, wow. so, no, Kevin, you have to you have to realize that bef before the last week of that study, mm -hmm. yeah, there was like was eight like, fucking people. That it, that took it. it was nothing, and and you know, we got sixty nine thousand. Yeah, you can yeah. you can correct. That me, was all in the last five days because we were. Yeah, it approached, it approached, no, there. everybody was against it. Everybody was yeah. against it. Towards the end, there was a big push, and we reached around 70,000 people. And it's still a very valid study, if yes. you ask me. And it's the only study, honestly, <laughs> of that magnitude. It's the only study. But just like that, you know, we, we needed to do another 10 studies of, 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 you know, of people right. that were using the products back in 2015, 2016, 17. Yeah. Get some numbers. But every study costs money. Every study costs money. You can't do it for free. You know what I'm saying? The industry needs to get behind it. And unfortunately, if it's not one of these groups that had the idea or you don't involve the VTA and the SPADA and the CASAS and all these other acronyms, just like our opponents, we have our own acronyms here that are fighting and competing. If you don't involve them, nobody's interested in doing anything. We, we got to put our logo on it. That's right. You got to put the, old, right. the, the logo on it. Right. But, uh, but, but anyway, it's too late. I'm sorry. Right, right. It's too late. What we need is synthetic nicotine to make a play for a different pathway. That is the win, in my opinion, right now. Forget about going through the PMTA process with, with, uh, with a flavored product or an open product. Hey, yeah. there's the lawsuits. <laughs> I'm going to duck now. <laughs> no, look, I mean, the, again, I'm not against the lawsuits. Nope. I just want to go clear. I want to be clear on the record. I'm not against the lawsuits. They're not going to, nobody's going to win, but that's not the point. I mean, there's not a win in court. Here was the win. Once again, we're following these lawsuits. We're getting some injunctions. The win would have been if we had a PR firm that was able to get on CNN and say, hey, look, we got 40 companies that are suing the FDA right now because they're putting their families out of business. There's this reasons. company has 100 employees and they service 30,000 United States citizens that quit smoking. And we have that's the win. The win is how can you take that effort and put it in front of the eyes? Yeah. We're fighting against the Department of Justice, folks. I, I don't know how to Kevin. It's like it's like Kevin uh, fighting Con uh, uh, Conor McGregor, whatever his name is. That I mean, he would kill Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that Kevin would ever win in an a MMA fight against this guy. Did, did you not see? There's a video of him on uh, on YouTube 
uh, you know, he has his own, he has his own Irish whiskey and it's awful. It, it is awful. It's called proper 12. And he goes into this pub in Ireland and there's an old man about Kevin's age sitting at the bar and he goes up and he, and he, he's trying to make everybody in the bar drink his, his whiskey and for free. And the old man says, I don't want that crap. And he knocks the old man out. Yeah. Oh. Imagine what he would do with Kevin. Oh my God. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> But again, back to your point, the only person that wins in these situations is attorneys because they make money. That's the only oh, yeah. people that win in these situations. Billable hours. The only, the only win would be, you know, Triton got an injunction. Great. This judge scolded the FDA. Great. Opportunity. What, what, what major news outlet reported that? Except Alex <laughs> Murcia and Filter. Uh, except that. Tell me one. Tell me one. I mean, that judge... I would have taken that wording and made a 30-second commercial that made the FDA look like it's the worst possible agency it in America is. right now. Because it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be honest. When it comes to this particular subject, I'm not going to talk about the other side. When it comes to tobacco harm reduction, FDA is the worst. Mm -hmm. Who took that opportunity? Tell me. Nobody. Nope. I mean, there's no pathway where the, a judge is going to go. Even if you reach a higher court, the judge is going to say, yeah, you shouldn't follow PMTA. The statue is not like that. The statue is clearly written. Yeah, we denied it for this. Bring it back in here. Let's take a look at it. All right, we'll take a look at the PMTA again. Uh, you're missing this. Denied. What are you going to do? Are you going to sue again? Right. Exactly. There's no mm -hmm. pathway because the PMTA, if, if, if anybody has read a, the a PMTA and the guidance, it's impossible for our products to get market authorization. Plain and simple. What are you doing, boy? I'm standing up. My legs are numb. I feel better oh. now. You know, Phil. Phil was telling me one time. I, I, it's. It's. <laughs> we were in a private conversation. And he says, "Careful." Says, no, no, no. Were, you, yeah, were your pants on? It's or not porn off? related. Don't worry. <laughs> is, it, know, is this I, while I, you I, were holding I, the cup? I know, I know all the niche that he likes, but that's a different discussion. <laughs> Over the years, I've, I've I've been known to say that we are f word, you know, and and um, mm -hmm. and I've been criticized uh, about this. But the fuck that remember that time, <laughs> Phil? You asked me last year. He's like, "Is there nothing that we can do?" Remember yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I said. Unless we get in front of of people and show the yeah. unjust criminal criminal corruption of this agency in allowing options for adult smokers that will die in America, we're we're done. There's nothing yeah. that we can do. We don't have another pathway. There is no other pathway. By design, this was done by design to eliminate competition. We have no other pathway. Yeah, you've been so, talking about PR for a long time now. I, mean, and, I, and, I think we should just buy some panel vans and 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 hand out yeah. like get a, old school pagers and uh, pass out business cards with just our phone numbers on them. Ads on TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna it's gonna cost a lot of money and. Uh, especially since the, the challenge is going to be that it doesn't fit their narrative either, right? So that's going to make it even more challenging to, uh, to, to do that kind of PR because I think we've seen, um, you know, good news get swept under the, the carpet if it doesn't fit the agenda, right? Studies uh, get swept up. We, we see it all the time. We see it all the time. We see when these the scientific professionals uh, are are talking about, you know, the fact that when you when you're doing this stuff to vaping, it's going to cause a health problem. It's going to cause people to go back to smoking. And we don't see that in mainstream media um, because I, I, I think it just doesn't fit their agenda. All right. So to 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 be there for us to be there. It's going to take a lot of money, right? Yeah, I mean Charles Cordemanche and 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 Mike Pesco and Cliff Douglas don't get to go talk on CNN and F, uh, uh, you know, um, sure, Fox News without a bankroll, right? Sure, and you know, you hey, got, hey, listen, you got... I, I want to make clear. I think that 
I think that 10 years from now, I think that the FDA is going to, you know, is going to come out and say vaping is better than smoking. I just want to be clear on that. But 10 years from now, all of our friends, all of our, all the hard work that we, that we put in to create this industry because we created it, all of, all of these products that helped millions of people quit smoking will be, will, will not be around. Everybody's livelihood dependent on this product will not be around. You know, the sad thing is, is, is if we had the PR firm in place right now, you're, you're saying that the FDA in the future is going to make the statement that vaping is safer than smoking. They have. They, yeah, they just I mean, did. They, they did. They did. They did. Right. With you know, with the, views, with the views they have said, yes. vaping yes. is safer than smoking. Yes. Right. Correct. We need to push that. Correct. Well, but, I mean. I have a video clip that's actually, uh, you know, the, the head of the CTP saying if every person that smokes cigarettes uh, substituted or quit smoking and transitioned to vaping, it would be a clear victory for public health. I mean, yeah, sure, it's, sure. it's on video. Every, sure. Everybody knows that. Uh, all I'm saying is that, the, like, like Phil said, the narrative right now does not help this. The, the system is not set up to to regulate uh, a thousand companies. The system is not set up to allow competition on the market. The system is set up of trying to eliminate. And honestly, one day when we see these memos and these, you know, these Netflix documentaries come 20, if we're still around, our kids, maybe we'll see them. Um, they, they probably thought that we would be gone earlier than what we are now. I think that we have really extended our stay and that's due to a few passionate people and and uh, uh, a few. We were a fad. Yeah, I, I think really that did. they they I think that both all the associations and corporations that want to see vaping, open vapor vaping eliminated from America, probably thought by 2017, 2018, we would be done. Uh, when when the PMTA was originally due. So, yeah. so the fact that we're still around here in 2021 and we're still talking about it is, um, it's quite amazing. Um, but the FDA has this huge protection blanket that has been granted to them from the Tobacco Control Act that unfortunately, without Congress getting involved, we will never be able to get Ooh. nicotine derived from tobacco products go through this process in the way that we enjoy them and millions of other people enjoy them in America. And Congress won't care. They don't give a shit. Oh, no, no. nobody cares. No. They don't give a shit. No, they'll just figure out a way to tax it. And that's that's all they care about. No, they'll, they will never do this. They will never yeah, take it away. And unfortunately, it's not even a taxable. And I'm going to tell you why. Here's a problem. Here's, here's a little fun fact for you since this is an international show. <laughs> there was a study done in Europe this year. And the study showed that in Europe right now, which vaping is healthy, right? Well, not everywhere, but vaping is healthy in the majority of the European countries. Uh, out of all the money that's being moved within the independent vapor space, only about 25% pay taxes. <laughs> so it's it's not, I mean, you know, vaping douchebaggery goes, it's, it's international. <laughs> it's not just an American <laughs> thing. <laughs> So, you heard it here first. <laughs> so, so only twenty five percent is actually being taxed. So when this when this survey this this came out, I mean, I was not I was not shocked. I thought it only happened in Greece, but apparently it's happening on all over European. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the government's going to do? Right. You think the government, the European Union, is going to sit back and say, "Oh yeah, let these uh, guys." you know, move all these millions and millions and not pay taxes, of course, you're going to see well, more yeah. restrictions. And that's going to come with a TPD3. The yeah. same thing is going to happen there as it's, it's as, yeah. as happening here. We're going to get, it's going to get, it's going to tighten up in Europe as well, too. It won't go away, but it's going to tighten up. And it's going to tighten up for the reason that a lot of these immature, not giving a shit about protecting their industry, players, distributors, manufacturers are are ruining this industry. And we got to wake up. I mean, in Europe, we're trying to wake up and say, hey, listen, people, we're going to have to change and find a way to work with the government in order that they get their cut. The product still remains inexpensive. 
and the industry can flourish. Nothing in life is as sure as taxes. We understand that. But it can be, we can coexist with taxes. We can coexist as long as we can work with a framework that makes sense for the government and it makes sense for us, number one. And number two, that we can collect it. So, right. You know, what do, what do we do when, we, when the government in Greece put 10%, 10, 10 cents per meal tax? We created the shake and vape model to basically bypass the tax. This is our way. It's our manipulation. Don't remember here how people had said, you know, we're going to put zero in a milligram. Then we're going to do synthetic. Mm -hmm. you know, all those are very good short-term solutions. But ultimately, all that does is it drives the industry to be put in a position from the government to say, okay, well, you screwed us once, you screwed us twice. And then now we're going to stick it to you. So... I lost my train of thought. Well, where I was going with this, but anyway, what, what I'm saying is that don't think don't think that 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 a tax structure is not possible, but it needs to be a tax structure that works for everybody. Here in Tennessee, I have a tax structure ready. If I get to the point where I have to negotiate a tax with the 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 caucus here, I have a tax structure ready that makes sense, and I can show how much money it's going to bring to the state versus whatever else they're going to propose. Because whatever they're going to propose or not, nobody's going to pay it. I mean, they don't. They don't. I can tell you here in America how this tax is being manipulated right now on a bottle of liquid. I can. I mean, I won't, but I can tell you that most of the people <laughs> are not paying their taxes. I mean, how exactly if if this thing in Greece goes through, are are they going to calculate five years of shake and bake? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you know, when it, when you import products in to, to Greece, you, you have to have, you know, uh, invoices, you pay an import tax. So there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of paperwork out there that, sh that shows, you know, I mean, we're, we're, I, I think from my understanding, we had a meeting with the, uh, with the department of, uh, of taxation the other day. And from my understanding is that they're threatening this. So we can say, okay, how about you forget everything from 2017 up to now and implement the tax going forward? I think that's their negotiation tool. Wow. Right? So that's what that's what they want us to say. Uh, I mean, look, generally on a shake and vape, there's 20 mLs of aroma inside. So in a 60 mil bottle, you have 20 mLs. So 20 mLs would be, um, if it's 10 cents per mil, it would be two bucks tax right, on this. Right. It's a lot. Yeah, a lot for twenty mLs of just flavoring, mm -hmm. <laughs> two two dollar two euros, because on top of that you have twenty four percent, which is the VAT, right? Mm -hmm. So you have two twenty four in tax in a sixty mil bottle of twenty mL of aroma. It's ridiculous, and it's not ready to vape. So mm -hmm. that our our one our, our number one argument, by the way, is this is our number one argument. This is what we're going to tell them. If you think that's ready to vape, what happens if somebody takes that? and vapes it and gets sick. Oh, dear God. Who's going to be responsible? Is the government going to be responsible? Because you're saying that it's ready to vape, even though it's not. So that's our number one. Nope. Our number two is, well, if you do that, then we're going to just make flavor shots. <laughs> so we're not going to have it in a 60 mil bottle. We're just going to have flavor. We're just going to do flavor shots that are going to be just aromas. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because now we're putting 20 ml in a 60 mil bottle. You pop the cap off. You put your PG. You yeah. put your VG. You put your nicotine. You shake it like this, and you vape it. Um, so there's ways to manipulate this, the system. There's definitely enough. But I think we should stop manipulating and come up with a structure and say, okay, well, take away this per, per mil tax. This is stupid. This is stupid. 8% across the board, everything. 8%. Hardware, liquids, BG, PG, everything that's sold in a, in a vape shop, 8% across the board. Put it on it. The customer pays... Uh, three percent of that. The distributor takes three percent of that. The shop owner takes two percent of that. We can absorb that tax all the way across, and I guarantee you, you're going to make more money for the government. That would make more yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Since nobody's yeah. paying per mill tax now, anyway. No. Right. I mean, yeah, that's the other elephant in the room is the fact that, uh, regardless of what FDA does, I mean, if the Build Back Better. Uh, vapor tax goes through <laughs> uh you know my diy nicotine is worth about fourteen thousand dollars in taxes oh i'd be flipping That's that shit on place. ebay i would be on ebay the next day selling my stuff i'd make little vials uh and uh and make a killing but no like i don't i mean honestly i don't think that this tax will pass as it is but i think that there will be some amendments there will be some changes and it is going to pass as part of an amendment something down the line i definitely it's going to pass 
something's going to pass. Um, I just don't think it's going to pass in the way that it is now, thankfully, because there's other people that don't want it, not, not because of us. Uh, yeah. But there's other people behind that don't want it as well, too. And they have higher, much more higher power than what we do. But we will see some kind of a tax. It'll be, and it'll be some kind of an amendment somewhere in a, in a bill that, uh, that once again is going to be a negotiation tool between the two big parties. And, of course, the dirty, stinky vapors will be thrown under the bus like Cole Bishop or whatever is what. Every every other amendment that we've lost, yeah, we've we've already we've already been negotiated out so many times. It's not even worth mentioning. But yeah, um, so it looks like we're getting we are getting uh, we're actually half an hour over the one hour mark. So uh, uh, you know we always end our show with the final thoughts. Um, <laughs> I don't know what final thoughts I I have at this moment, but, uh, but you, need, I'll go. Can I go? Can yeah, I go? go ahead. Go go. Can I go? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this like so I've been sitting back and listening and I've been listening to this vape tax thing. And you know what? I just sit here and I just get more and more frustrated the more I listen to this. The the more the more we're talking about taxes and we're talking about regulation and, oh, and we're, we're walking around with signs that say we vape, we vote. You know why? You know why this is all frustrating? Because vaping has the ability to save lives. Vaping has the ability to, if you're a smoker and you convert to vaping, you might not die of cancer. Shouldn't that be enough? Shouldn't that be enough for people to just, uh, enough with the taxes, enough with the we vape, we vote. We we could save lives, right? Look, I, I, we've gone down this path. I, I know they don't give a fuck about health and everything, but that's the world that I want to live in. The world that I want to live in is we're not talking about taxes. We're not talking about money. We're talk not talking about revenue. We're not talking about PR firms. We're not talking about we vape, we vote. We're just talking about, okay, wait, it can save lives. Let's support it. It's the greatest thing ever, right? That, that That's the world that I want to live in. That's the world we should be living in. And we should all be extremely frustrated and aggravated and outraged, outraged that we're jumping through these hoops with these taxes and this synthetic nicotine and all this horse shit, right? To, 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 to not die of cancer. Those are my final thoughts. Yeah. I want, I, and especially in Cape Coral, where there's a lot of older people, they need, they yeah. need it quick over there. Cause they're, they're closer oh to the God. end of their life. You, you know, I, I tried, I try to make a good point right at the end and he comes in with that. No, I know your point. You had a great point. It was, I just brought a little bit of entertainment because you brought everybody down. I mean, no, you're, you're, you're he brought, brought everybody, everybody up, down. but I mean, it's cancer is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a sad subject. So I just try to bring a little bit of entertainment. Um, my final thoughts will be very, very, very simple. Let's stop asking consumers. You've, we've drained consumers. Let's start, let's stop asking consumers for these calls to action. Let's stop, you know, ostracizing people that are not signing a petition Let's stop asking these small business owners that have been drained um, through Evali and through COVID and through laws and taxes to pony up for some stupid um, movement to a three-letter acronym association. Let's stop trying to go and spend money through a PMTA or th throw money at attorneys that are getting rich and our businesses are getting poor and uh, come up with a public relations um campaign the only thing that can say vaping over the next two three months is getting small shop owners in front of tv saying that my customers are going to die from what the fda is going to do right now getting scientists and we have enough scientists here in america that will back us getting scientists on cnn and on fox news saying what the fda is doing is criminal and th this product needs to be around for smokers we need to change the narrative not for smokers and vapors, but mostly for the public out there that doesn't realize what this product is and what the government is doing to restrict our citizens and our human beings from having access to it. Well, I mean, I just, I, I first I want to thank Nancy and H and all the people at CAFRA and, uh, you know, INCO, uh, all the people that have participated in Scope. This is the last time you get to see me on, on this channel. Tomorrow night, we're going to go back and do our normal show on Smoke Free Radio. Uh, we'll have some fun. Uh, it'll be it'll be fun. It, it, you know, it'll be the conversation that we normally have, maybe talk about some news stories and stuff. But I want to say thanks to the folks at CAFRA for putting Scope together. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it looks shitty um and it probably is shitty but uh we're still going to be here and i don't you know i i don't got a problem breaking the law to save a life i don't so uh you know we're always going to be here for people that need help um and you know literally uh it, if you're in the states and you can't stop smoking or you need help stopping smoking or you can't get your stuff we know people in almost every state so we can make it happen you know maybe but uh you know, let, you know, we, we're pretty negative. We, you know, say stuff like we're fucked and FDA is going to kill us and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, until it's over, let's just keep fighting. We'll keep doing our thing, keep talking to people. But yes, uh, you know, if Dimitri is right and there's five companies that make $50 million each a year, um, why do you need a three-letter acronym? Couldn't you five guys get together and put some money together and defend your fucking industry and defend your companies and maybe fight for your uh, future uh, business? I mean, really, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, other, otherwise, you're just, you know, profiting off of the death of your own business by saving all that money and not using it. So anyway, uh, love you guys. Uh, we're going to we're gonna keep doing what we do. We're going to have some fun while we do it. And if we get to curse and drink a lot, then we'll do that too. We'll see ya. And uh, thanks again for Scope. Yes.